things that has always bugged me about the key of C is that it doesn't sound as bluesy as keys like E or A. In this lesson, I wanna show you one of the things you can do to get started making C sound bluesier and how to start improvising when you're playing in the key of C. If that's something you'd like to learn about in more detail, all this month in my membership at Fingerstyle 5, I'll be teaching in-depth lessons for beginning and intermediate students on how to start improvising over an alternating thumb bass in the key of C. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out the link below or the link on screen. And now, let's get started with improvising in C right here on the channel. <laughs> Okay, there's just three things we're gonna look at right now. One is how to get that percussive sound on the backbeat. I call that damping the backbeat or ghosting the backbeat. Basically on beats two and four, you're gonna relax your grip and get more of a snappy sound, which makes it sound less folky than when you leave all the strings open. The next thing is what notes to use. And we're gonna start off here with just major pentatonic notes. Add in the flat third and the flat seven, which is what's going to make that basic C and C major pentatonic sound sound more bluesy in the first place. And finally, we're going to replace a basic C major chord with a C6 chord so that you can not only get more of a swinging sound than a straight open C major chord will give you, but you can also do another technique with your middle finger on your fretting hand to damp the fourth string, which is another way to get that percussive snap on beats two and four. So let's go into just a little more detail about each of those things, and then I'll show a couple of licks that illustrate how to put all this together. So the first thing, this idea of ghosting the backbeat. The backbeat is beats two and four, and when you're playing an alternating thumb in C, you're typically playing fifth string, fourth string, sixth string, fourth string. And so beats two and four happen when the thumb is playing the fourth string. And if you just relax your grip, instead of holding the strings down to the fretboard, relax your grip, but still be touching the strings, then you get that kind of choked or damped sound on beats two and four. And if you do a little palm muting over on this side as well, you don't get so much of that quacky kind of sound, but if you have the palm muting down, you just get this kind of nice muffled percussive thing happening. So that's the first thing. Now, as far as the notes you can choose, starting off in C, we could just have the notes of the major pentatonic scale, which here's the root C, and we can go down to the sixth and the fifth, or we could go up to the second and the major third, if we go as far as the high string. But if we just stick to the root and the second, here on the second string, if we go up one more fret, we get the flat third, which we're borrowing from the minor pentatonic scale. So just starting with these three notes, we can start to make things sound bluesier right away. And then if we go down, here's the fifth and the sixth of the major pentatonic scale. One more fret and we can get the flat seven which is also borrowed from the C minor pentatonic scale. But if we take these major notes and combine them with this minor pentatonic note, now we've got all kinds of stuff that we can do on the third string as well. So put all together, Just playing single note licks, we can start to get a much bluesier sound while still basically working out of the major pentatonic scale. And then the third thing we can do is treat our default C chord not so much as just a C major chord, but as a C6 chord. So to do that, I'm still playing the root and the third, and then I'm kind of doubling up here so that this middle finger is getting both the third and the sixth of C. And then index is getting the root. And if you hold down that chord favoring the third string, then the front or the tip of your middle finger can also be a way to damp the back beat, the fourth string. So instead of lifting or relaxing your grip, 
you can just keep everything down so that you can have notes that ring out on top. But this front part of your middle finger is going to be the damper touching the side of the fourth string. And again, in conjunction with some palm muting, you can get that snappier backbeat that you want by using this kind of technique. So now, with two different ways to get that percussive groove in the bass and two different blue notes to add into the major pentatonic scale, you can set up that groove with that snap on the backbeat and then start with major pentatonic notes on top and then start to add in some blues notes. So you can start this idea out really simply. Just set up the alternating thumb, try to get that percussive sound going on beats two and four, and then just experiment with putting just a couple of major pentatonic licks over that bass until you feel comfortable enough to start adding in the flat third and the flat seven as well. And if you've always wanted to learn how to improvise but didn't know where to begin, I have an entire series inside my membership, the Fingerstyle Five, called Fundamentals of Improvisation. And this month, I'll be doing in-depth lessons all month long for beginners and intermediates on how to get started improvising over the chords in the key of C. So major and minor pentatonic licks over C, F, and G, and how to put them all together so you know how to make a complete solo over a song like John Hurt's Nobody Dirty Business. To learn more about that, go to fretboardconfidential.com. In the meantime, if you've got a question about improvising or playing in the alternating thumb groove, Leave it for me in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.